In every sales conversation, the human being that has the greatest emotional control has the highest probability of getting the outcome that they desire. What most people do is they prospect once. Like they have prospecting day. I'm like, no, it's prospecting every day. Start thinking about how do you change the perception of the human being that you're having a conversation with rather than trying to change as a whole. In your book, there's prospecting and then there's fanatical, fanatical right. prospecting. So, so, you know, you talk about it not be a job thing. Then the best prospectors don't say, okay, I'm done with my job at five o'clock. I have my prospecting mm -hmm. habit. I leave it. I hang it up and I pick it up the next morning. You're talking about it being a lifestyle. Can you unpack that? It's, it? Yeah, it's always on. Like, I mean, if you think about being fanatic, fanatical says the pipe is life. The pipe is life. <laughs> so if I have a full pipeline and, and let's go back to your original question about I'm brand new in sales. So how to get good at it? Well, if we, if we were to dial sales down into this, um, it's in every sales conversation, the human being that has the, the, the greatest emotional control mm -hmm. has the highest probability of getting the outcome that they desire. So if I go to you and you say, look, I'm really not in insurance. If I go, oh my goodness gracious, I just got a rejection, then I'm going to walk away. But if I said, that's cool, I totally get that. I mean, it's not for everybody. Who do you know? Right. If I have that type of emotional control, it's really easy. You're much more likely to say, well, I know Bob over there. Why don't you go talk to Bob? So if we start thinking about prospecting, and I teach people this, like emotional control. So how do you have emotional control? Everything we just talked about on stage was about emotional sure. control, if you think about it. Well, the easiest, fastest way to gain emotional control is have a full pipeline. Think about it. You're, you're closing business, closing business, closing business, and you have, a, you have like a dinner meeting, and you bring people in, and it doesn't make a difference if you lose five grand or not. It doesn't make a difference if, you, if anybody signs up or not. That type of emotional control attracts people to you. It's like a magnet. Yeah. So you want to get better at sales, better at the craft, better at everything, have a full pipeline. But that means that you are always prospecting all the time. And insurance is a tough place to prospect. Anybody who sells insurance knows that if you're standing in front of somebody and you say the word insurance, they're moving in the other direction. We just know that to be true, right? But, but that's just life. So you, you, you learn different ways to approach people, different ways to have things. But prospecting is the key to everything. It is the secret of life. Life. Mm -hmm. It is activity, 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 activity. But just think about prospecting like if you're building a business. Mm -hmm. like the business person that's going to build the best business is the relentless person that every single day they're doing a little bit of activity. Mm -hmm. right? So it's the cumulative impact of a little bit of prospecting every day. What most people do is they prospect once. So they have prospecting day. I'm going to have prospecting day. I'm like, no, it's prospecting every day, yeah. every single day. And, and in your world, in the, in the PHP world, it is prospecting in Walmart. It is prospecting McDonald's. You know how many times I, I, I'm, and I don't in the training world, but if I saw you there and you had a logo shirt on, I'd go, that's pretty cool. What, what do you do? Or what kind of company is that? And I always go, are they treating you all right over there? That's what he says. I say, are they treating you right over there? And they go, and they go, yeah. Or they go, no. I said, well, you give me your boss's name. I'll give him a call. <laughs> you know, and I just have conversations with people everywhere. I'm just talking with people. So prospecting never stops. It's always on. Look at the very best salespeople in your life, the people that you know. They never, ever stop. Now, here's the problem. Now, the, all the people around you in your life are going to get mad at you because you're prospecting all the time. Yeah. Right. I've got dents in my shin where my wife has kicked me under the table because I go, I can help but notice, you know, that blah, 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 blah. Who's the person around here? I'm like, ow. Yeah. You know, so. Coming. Yeah. My kids know it's coming. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, exactly. everywhere. So, but the same thing for recruiting. Like, you know, if I'm, if, you know, when I'm recruiting people, I'm always on the lookout for talent. I'm always looking for people. And if I meet someone and I like them, like they've got a great personality or there's someone, I go, you know, listen, I, I, I know you're probably happy where you are right now, but I got an opportunity I'm wondering if we could sit down and have a cup of coffee so I could learn a little bit more about you to see if you'd be a fit for it. Um, how about next Thursday? I'm buying. And I meet more people that way. And I'll sit down and have a conversation. If I like them, I go, you know, may, this might not be the right time for you. I totally get that. Let me grab all your information. And I just put them on my dial list. Yeah. And the thing about it is that everybody's going to have something that changes in their life. And when it changes and they're thinking about me, I'm going to be the first person they call. So you're building, I call it, you're building a drawer full of resumes, right? I'm building a drawer full of people. Yep. And these days it's not a drawer like it's in your phone. But I mean, in the old days, it was a drawer full of things. And that way I always have somebody, always got somebody coming in, always building, you know, building my pipe. So, it, and I think that's what people miss sometimes is that you're thinking like prospecting is some sort of a, you know, the immediate, like, immediate reaction. it doesn't work that way. And, and by the way, it's not that way. It is not a, it's not like. You prospect, therefore you get. Correct. And it's like in the book, we talk about the 30-day rule. 
the prospecting you do in any 30-day period has a tendency to pay off over the next 90 days. The talking with people that you do in any given 30-day period pays off over time. That's why you have to do it every day, every day, every day, every day. You're making your own luck. In your experience, in your, in, in your, your, your ability to see companies, what can, what can we do as life insurance agents? What can we do to change the perception of people that being revolted anytime they see somebody saying, I do insurance? Well, I don't know that you can, I don't know that you're going to change that perception. I mean, I think the truth is, is that that's sort of hardwired. Like, you know, when I go to a networking event and they go, what do you do? I say, I train salespeople. They're like, they're moving in another direction. I mean, you know, it's just, okay. when you say sales, this is, it's just what we do. I think what you have to th- start thinking about is, is how do you change the perception of the human being that you're having a conversation with rather than trying to change as a whole? And think about this. People buy life insurance for their reasons, not yours. So what most people are doing is they're talking at people about why they should get life insurance versus having a conversation with people about what's happening in their life, what assets do they want to protect, what's important to them. And, and, and it's generational. It depends on who you're talking with. So you know, for my generation, it can be, it can be a hedge on, you know, on wealth. So sure. life insurance fits that it's, or a hedge on your business, you know? So, um, so do you have enough life insurance? So if something happens to the key person in the business for a young, you know, a young family, like when I first, you know, got married and we were talking about having a family, the very first thing I did was bought life insurance. So that it's, you know, it's, so that it was a, a, it was a protection against sure. something happening in the future. But I had a, I had a motivation for doing that then that was different than when I bought life insurance a few years ago. Yeah. Because in that situation, I'm trying to protect the people in my company yeah. that if something happens to me, yeah. that there's enough money to, to make sure that the business is sustainable because I got a lot of families that count on me. Yeah. So I think what you have to do is you sit down and have a conversation, not about life insurance, but about, you know, it's about in, investing in financial future and your assets and um, what's important to you, both emotionally and, you know, and objectively. So, you know, there's emotional outcomes for people and then there's, you know, there's what we call business outcomes, but there's, you know, there's, there's tangible outcomes. Mm-hmm. So that's what gets messed. And so we start thinking about is a system, right? Yeah. The system is not talking at you. I want to talk to you about life insurance. Okay. Those are the, those are the words that are going to get you kicked out of the room. Sure. If you said, you know, I, I'm, I want to sit down with you because I, I help people who are in your situation, you know, protect their, their future yeah. and, you know, and build a better future for their family. And I don't know if what I do is right for you, but I thought maybe we could sit down and have a conversation. Do you prefer brand new people to cold call and buy leads and cold call or go through the route of friends and family and look for referrals? If you had a choice, would you, what would you prefer? Well, I would I'd probably do both, you know, because what I want to do is amplify my impact. And so what I would start with are, I mean, referrals is going to be your best lead. So if you get, if someone gives you a referral, that's what you want. So you should be relentlessly asking for referrals. Yeah. And if you come into, especially in insurance, you want to begin with your circle of influence. So I want to begin with, we're here and I want to call on all those people because if I, if I call on those people and I get those people to start working with me, then I can, then I can expand into their circle of influence and expand into their circle of influence. That's a lot easier because when people are familiar with you, familiarity breeds liking, it's a lot easier to have a conversation with them. But I'm a little bit different in that I also believe in making my own luck. So I believe that the more you prospect, the luckier you get. And, and, you know, some people say, well, you know, gosh, I'll, you know, I'll make 500 calls and, you know, 10 people will talk to me. And I go, yeah, but, you know, I make 500 calls, 10 people talk to me. And one of those people that talk to me is now my largest customer, right? So I won. So I say you do a little bit of each. Plus, there's some real benefit in calling strangers. We were talking about this on stage, creating, building obstacle immunity, yeah. interrupting invisible strangers, like calling on strangers, meeting people anywhere you go. You're going to get a lot of rejection. You're going to get a lot of people telling you no, but you, 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 you kind of form a callus. Like you get really good at it. Yeah. And that makes you better when you start working in, in your circle. So I'm just a fan of doing both. That's not for everybody. Like there's some mm-hmm. people that, you know, the thought of like calling up a stranger or like approaching somebody they don't know is the most right. terrifying thing in the world for them. Yeah. You know, so like I always say, you know, the, the like public speaking yeah. terrifies people. It's like the worst thing. Right. Um, but, you know, but if you, if you said you can go on stage and talk for, you know, 15 minutes or you can make five cold calls, most people would pick the stage, right? right? Yeah. And um, so I think that the, I think that, that for me it's do both. But if you're smart, like start with people you know, build build that circle, and 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 don't bounce off people. Like you know, one of the problems I'll go to someone I know and I'll go, 
I'll go, hey, you know, let me talk to you about what I do. And they go, I'm really not interested. And you won't go away. Instead of going, I know you're not interested. That's cool, right? Flip them into a referral. Who do you know that I should be talking to? Who else in your circle? And we teach the same thing in military curriculum. You, you go to somebody and they go, look, I'm really not interested in joining the military. You go, that's cool. Who do you know? And the, and the recruiters that do that, like, who do you know? Yeah. Th- that person, if they're nice to them, if they're mm-hmm. respectful and nice, that person may hook them up with three or four people that are ready to go. And so that's what you got to do.